You don't want to see me. <laughs> Aaron, yes, I do. <laughs> Shannon, hi. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> well, I'd like to see you. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have Glory to at least put my eyebrows on. <laughs> Patty, turn on your camera. Mm. Oh. I don't know what's Glory to God. Glory to God. I tell you what. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a lot warmer in here than it was five minutes ago. Hey, so let me yeah, know. that'll do it. Good morning, honey. What, Robert? I just said hallelujah. I was raising my hand because I had a hand raised on there. Okay, let's just. I don't know how to put it down. Praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. I want to hear you. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> Whoa, praise the Lord, glory to God. Come on, Patty, turn your camera. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> Patty's on. Come on, Pat. <laughs> I had a hard time getting on. I don't know why. Well, because everybody's using Zoom. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Zoom is a real big deal right now. Oh. Thank God for Zoom. <laughs> Thank God for Zoom. Yes. Who was it that used to say, oh, I think it was uh, Robert, wasn't it? Um, Robert, what'd you, how'd you get that thumb up there? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like yeah. that. Mickey Mouse. It says reactions on the bottom. Where on the bottom? <laughs> on the bottom. Right next to the record button. <laughs> oh, I'm learning so much. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. It's that one. Oh, something's on. Rob, somebody's at the door. <laughs> no. Hello. <laughs> hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome. My entrance. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, who's got a praise report? I Who's Shannon? <laughs> Shannon's on all the way from Korea. Oh, I mean, I can feel the spirit on you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Everybody that has breath, let them praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Levon, good to see you. Levon, go to your bottom on the left and turn it on. <laughs> Uh, Trump's second term could destroy Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah, that's the that Okay, we, we aren't into, we're not into politics this morning. No, we're here to praise the Lord. We're here to praise the Lord. I've got a really that's good right. word. I have a really good word. <laughs> Patty, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Okay, Patty, open us up with prayer. Oh. Okay. Lord, I just thank you for today, and I just thank you for the sunshine being out there. This is yes. a day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you that we're able to fellowship one with another. And thank you, Lord, for coming in and being here. I can feel your presence already, Lord. And I just thank you for who you are and what you're doing. And just help us to get through all this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I tell you what, I am ready to see God move. But I have a word this morning that I really think is going to be a blessing. But before I give it, does anyone have a praise report? I want to praise for my family being here that I'm not sitting in my house all by myself. Amen. <laughs> that we have each other and we have all these dogs that are running around and keep us busy. <laughs> and they're fun. <laughs> they're funny. <laughs> that little puppy's funny. <laughs> so I, I, I praise the Lord for them. Amen. 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 Yada Beth, when are you due? I'm due on May 14th. May 14th. Yeah. Um, May, baby. Yes, you may. But I believe it's coming before that. You think so? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. <laughs> Yes. You're carrying kind of low there. Yes, I am. It's yeah. kicking. <laughs> oh, good. good. It's a sign of good things. A sign of good things. Well, I'm going to give you the word this morning, and I'm going to start out of the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 25. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of, the mis of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits and blindness in part, has is happened to Israel unto the fullness of the Gentiles become in. What God is really showing me is that 
And I'm going to go to Jeremiah 33, 3. A lot of people have heard this scripture. Yep. But, you know, it's like a now moment. Call unto me and I will answer you. Yeah. And I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Yeah. God, in the midst of this, is wanting to release mysteries, miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. I believe it with yes. all my heart. And God, in the midst of this, now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back for just a moment and say this. God did not create this pandemic. No. A lot of people are out there saying, no. God allowed this to humble the church, to do this to the church, to that to the church. I got news for you. God did not. I, am, mm -hmm. I do not serve a God that is the author of destruction. I serve a God that brings life and gives it abundantly. Amen. I serve a God that is forgiving and full of grace and mercy. I mm -hmm. serve a God who cares for us when we don't care for anyone else. I mm -hmm. serve a God who sent his son to die for us so that we could live and not perish. That's the God that I have. So when you're hearing the prophetic or somebody just speaking, let us break down those old traditional um, legalistic walls that have come to us so often and said, well, God did this in order for us to do that. One thing I have to tell you about our God, he's not a God of pride. No. God would never bring destruction just so that he could save us so that he could look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's just not the God that I serve. I serve a God that says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. But in the midst of this, God will do something. He will show up and he will shift our thinking and he will purposely say, I didn't cause this, but I'm going to be found in the midst of it. Amen. You know, Man. I didn't do it. Come on, somebody. That's I didn't right. do it, didn't do but it. I'm there. Right. You know, we have a lot of people around the world that absolutely hate our president, but I believe God's trying to use him. And does he make mistakes? I believe so. I believe we all make mistakes. Absolutely. But at the same time, I still believe that God is so sovereign that he's going to move in the midst of this. And while he moves, we might actually see the church unite. Wouldn't that be novel? Amen. <laughs> it should happen. Wouldn't it be amazing if the church just came together and said, we're just going to rise up and be with God. Amen. Glory to God. No competition, <laughs> nothing else. Just do it. Yeah. And when he says, call unto me, how do I call unto God? I call unto him in my prayer. I call unto him in song. I call unto him in worship. I call unto him when I'm reading his word. I call unto him. But there's something that happens in the call. It's are we listening to the response from God? Let that sink in for a moment. Do we listen to what God is saying when we call? I think that's very, very important. How do we listen? In Jeremiah 17, 23 says, yet they did not listen or incline their ear, but stiffen their necks in order not to listen or take correction. Uh -huh. Uh, yep. sometimes God answers and he tells us things we don't want to hear sometimes God is silent because we asked amiss sometimes God is silent because that wasn't what he was expecting remember when he stood before Pilate and he said nothing and he said well what you ask is amiss right. and then when he they asked directly they spoke directly <laughs> directly spoke back isn't that amazing? Lord, heal that cough in the name of Jesus. Amen. But do we listen? I'm going to read this again. Yet they did not listen. Where do you listen? Here. Inside. This is where the listening is. It's on the inside. And then it says, or incline their ear. There's a difference between hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. 
do we only hear or do we listen so that it doesn't become a <laughs> the other day i was sitting here at the computer and i was working and i look out and the birds are chirping at me and they're angry and i'm like excuse me and i look over and they're standing where the water fountain usually is they're waiting for it so when robert came in i said uh robert the birds are angry with you you haven't put the water fountain up you had to put the water fountain up and then we had snow <laughs> go figure i robert you're muted i mean it was absolutely crazy now let's go back to this Yet they did not listen. In other words, they did not receive what God was saying, nor did they listen in their ear. They didn't let their ear open. But they stiffened their necks in order to not listen or take correction. I think this is very, very important because if we want to have God answer, we cannot be in a spirit of rebellion. I'm on somebody. Yeah. Yep. Spirit mm -hmm. of rebellion is what? The same as witchcraft. 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 And when yeah. we're in witchcraft, what does it do? It invites the enemy to come in yeah. and bring destruction. Yeah. Uh, okay, now we're going to move on to a next scripture, Jeremiah 6.10. To whom shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear. Behold, their ears are closed and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them and they have no delight in it. To whom shall I speak and give warning? The Bible says he does nothing without speaking first to the prophetic, yeah. the prophets. Now, let me just take that. This is the prophets right here. This is the prophets. It's the word of God. This is the prophetic manual. This is what's yeah. right here. It's called the Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. That's what it is. Basic instruction before leaving earth is the Bible. And so what do we need to do? We need to listen to what the word is saying in catastrophe, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, in times of joy, so that we don't get puffed up and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because that's easy yeah. to do. And we don't want that to be happening. Hello? Yeah. Come on. Either Absolutely. you're with me or not. Because that's, God's yeah. going to show us something. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. To whom shall I speak and give warning? The prophets, that they may hear. The prophets. Every one of you are prophetic. Not because you're this group. But the Bible says in Corinthians, desire to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Every one of you should be able to prophesy. Every one of you. In Jeremiah 6.10, it continues on. But, you know, behold, their ears are closed. Make people whose ears are closed. Pay attention to people whose ears are closed, and sometimes you have to walk up to them and go like this. Snap them. Snap them and open up those ears and rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus because the devil is what's preventing people from listening because he knows how to turn you off. It's your fallen nature. The fallen nature yields to the enemy turning you off before he will allow God to turn you on. So we have to pay attention to that. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. amen. All right. Now in Isaiah chapter 30, verse nine, it says, for this is a rebellious people, false sons, sons who refuse to listen to the instruction of the Lord. These are the false. But somehow God begins to do a transformation. Somehow, in the Old Testament, as God is speaking about those that are rebellious, and he gives us a sign, somehow God says, I've had enough, I'm sending my son. And it's a done deal. And what happens in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, however, even though we've heard about this, however, 
There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Yes. In our society, in the world right now, we had in our, in our lifetime, we have never seen a pandemic. And in our lifetime, we have never seen nor heard of this kind of a war that came out of China. This is a war that was released on the earth. It was released to do one thing, to take dominion. Yep. And you can only take dominion if you make people too sick. When people are sick, they yield. Mm. Come on now. Weaken some. People yield. Even spiritually and sin sick people yield to the accusers, to the abusers. They yield. Yeah. So yeah. when the pandemic was released, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when that pandemic was released, it was an act of war from China in order to dominate. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 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 And they're going to pay a price. The Lord already spoke to me and said, there's going to be many lawsuits against China. And these lawsuits against China is going to force China to bend their knee. And the underground church in China will rise. Glory. And it'll be the saving grace of that nation. The only thing that's going to save that nation is when the underground church is allowed to come out. Yes. It's going to happen. There are mysteries that are getting ready to be revealed. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9, he said, He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. The will of God is not to lay down and be a carpet, to be, be kind, meaning understanding to those that know not. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a difference in saying what needs to be said to the church and a difference saying to those who know not. Mm -hmm. You can't speak church language to the world. They don't get it. No, they don't. That's why they're so rebellious. That's why they don't want to hear from the church. That's why we have so many legislatures that are against the church because they people from the church go in and talk to them as if they're one of them. You can't do them. You can't do that. We have to learn the language in order to bring the proper language. Shannon here is in Korea, South Korea. She has to know the language and how to get along and be received. My son was in the South, in South Carolina. He couldn't come in like a Chicago gangbuster because they didn't receive him because they have all these notions about Chicago. When Robert and I were in England, there's a way to talk when you're in England. There's a way to talk here. There's a way to talk to the Catholics. There's a way to talk to the Baptists. There's a way to talk to the Methodists. There's a way to communicate. But the problem is that they get sick and rebellious because you're talking to them the way you want to talk to them and not the way God wants to talk to them. And mm -hmm. therefore, we don't have revival. Mm -hmm. And we need revival. God said he has made the known, the known to us the mystery of his will. And it's always his will for someone to be saved. Yes, it is. It is always his will for someone for someone to hear the voice of the Lord. It is always God's will when you see someone sick that you are to pray for them. It is always God's will for you to lay your hand near that television and pray for your leaders. It is always God's will to hold up your church in prayer. It is always God's will to think of those that have not and give. It is always God's will to be kind to someone who doesn't deserve it. Amen. Because that's showing the grace. Oh, man. I tell you, sometimes Amen. we have no grace in us at all. I know. I put some things on Facebook the other day, and I had people angry with me because I was speaking the truth. But I did not pass judgment. And I had in my inbox several people telling me that they will no longer be my friend because I am not being a lay-down lover. 
I said, I refuse to love God and lay down and let the devil walk on me. Amen. <laughs> That's good. We're not in a season of lay down lovers. We're no. in a season where the church has to put on the full armor of God and get Amen. out there and be a voice and give strength to those that know not. Yeah. Amen. And that even means people in the church that have been so much of a lay down lover that they can't get back up. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's uh -huh. a season for that. There's a season to everything. There is a season. To everything, there is a season. And we have to understand that the times and the seasons. Glory to God. In First Timothy chapter three, for, uh, blah, 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 blah. in chapter three, verse sixteen, it says, "By common confession, great is the mystery of godliness." Hello, by common confession. If you want to hear from God, confess to God that you're a sinner and say, "Hey, I need you. I'm a sinner. Come on over here and talk to me." Yeah. You know, I, I love getting before the Lord, but when I get before the Lord, listen, I'm real before the Lord. I don't make it up. I don't pretend to be holier than God when I'm before him because he already knows I'm a mess. That's true. As long as we're still on this earth in the flesh, our flesh is still going to move. Yep. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's going to move. Yeah. It's going to move. <laughs> It's going to move. Let's give God a praise and a name. Hallelujah. By common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. He who has revealed in the flesh was vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, come on, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Jesus found a way to take our sin upon his flesh so that we could rise with him. Today is the um, Easter, the Greek Easter, the Orthodox Easter Sunday is today. So we have been in two weeks of Holy Week. We had Holy Week all before last Easter, last Sunday Easter, and we have another Holy Week for the Greek Orthodox. You see, we have been given a double portion of being able to repent and ask God to forgive us of our sins. Yeah. Come into our heart, change us from our wicked ways and turn our heart away from the evils of this world. This is the message that God is trying to say to the church today. Turn from the ways that weren't working yesterday and lean on me today so that you can get fresh revelation to do something for today because what you're seeing, you have never seen before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God says, Amen. Call unto me, and I will answer you. Seek me while I may be found. Listen and do not stiffen your neck. Listen, open your ears, unplug your ears to the things that you don't want to hear. Because right now, it's many things we don't want to hear, we have to hear. And we don't want to hear it because it's an offense to us. I don't want someone to rebuke me and tell me I'm wrong. I don't want someone to do that. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong because I want to be made right. Because when it's godliness, he reveals the mysteries. He reveals strategies. He reveals things that have never been revealed before. Why? Because we're in a season of something that's never happened in our lifetime. It happened in the generations past, but it hasn't happened in our lifetime. When I was laying in the hospital, the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is a SARS virus. He said, this is all from SARS. Uh -huh. So I came home and looked it up. Every Corona virus, COVID virus has all come from SARS. Uh -huh. There are actually hundreds of them out there. And in the labs in China, they have at least 1,500 viruses in lockdown. I read that last night. Wow. I think we should bomb the heck out of that lab. The problem is it would loosen the viruses. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Needs to be buried. Needs to be destroyed. All we do that is nuke it. 
Well, then look at the millions of people you kill. God has to give strategy. Right. And God will give strategy. And when he does, I pray that the people in leadership will listen. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. They will listen to the prophets. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 10 and 12, it says this. It says, And or as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of grace that would come to you, made careful searches and inquiries, seeking to know what person or time of the Spirit of Christ within them is Listen to this again. The prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquiries, seeking to know what person or time the spirit of Christ within them was indicated. Knowing the season and time is key for understanding the mysteries that are being released. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory to follow. The prophets prophesied the birth, the death, and the resurrection, and the glory of God. They prophesied it over and over again. The prophets have. But there's a season where the searching has to come in. There's a season of the searching. There's a season of the searching. There's a season of the searching and inquiry. And as we're in the season and the prophets, it says, searches and inquiry, seeking to know what person or time of the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the Hallelujah. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? Glory to God. Then it goes on to say, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. Here's another key of mystery. To lay aside selfishness and think of others before yourself. Oh man, it's a bad connection. See what I'm saying? What's happening mm -hmm. is that the people are now listening and they're searching instead of parroting and copying for likes, forwards, and comments. Mm. Hello. Mm. Hello. Yeah. No. Hello. <laughs> it's really important to understand. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, but you. In these things which you have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things unto which angels long to look. Now remember, the angelic realm is always looking to see the word of the Lord come to pass. That is powerful. That is very powerful. The angels of the Lord, it's not every angels, there's angels of the Lord that want to carry the word to and fro throughout the earth. Now you have to remember, there's seven continents, there's seven angels, there's seven lampstands. Each country or each continent has a lampstand and an angel assigned to it. When the word of the Lord goes forth, those angels listen and hearken unto the word because now they're being activated. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. There was, a, there was a minister, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, Kenneth Copeland, that's who it was. Kenneth Copeland, he was he's an amazing man, 
But he was on, I think, middle into the middle to the left coast. He was heading to the left coast. And he stopped somewhere and he saw a gigantic demon standing there. Gigantic. And he spoke to that demon. He said, why are you here? He says, I'm here because nobody told me to leave. Huh. And he said, how long have you been here? He says, I've been here since the fall. And he says, well, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. And the demon left. <laughs> there are principalities that we now in the church have to learn how to minister to people to help tear down these principalities that are now around the world causing bankruptcy. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just financial bankruptcy. We're talking financial bankruptcy of the spirit. Yes. People that are scared over this whole thing. And if we're honest, we're going to admit, hey, I've been locked in because I'm scared of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. I've been locked in. I've had to be because I don't want to get out there and catch somebody's sneeze. And it may not even be the virus. It could just be anything else. But at the same time, I'm listening to what the Lord is saying. I'm angry at many of the people that are playing games with the Lord during this instead of being a voice of reason. Because mm -hmm. that's what we're supposed to do. Because God is releasing reason unto the church today. Why? Because we're the only thing that can bring balance to the world. We have the anointing that destroys the yoke. We have the favor of God because we have the Holy Ghost. We are born of the Spirit to release the Spirit worldwide. Take advantage of the airwaves. We can't walk into our churches, but we can dominate the airwaves. And the bird of the air shall tell the matter. That bird is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, he, here's the last scripture that I have for today. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For those he did foreknow, he predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. You are it. Yeah. You're the leader of your house. You're the leader on the street when you're driving the car. Shannon walks everywhere. She's the leader of the sidewalk. You're the leader because you have the anointing on you to destroy the yoke. Yes. You have the anointing to transform others. You have the anointing to speak to that wicked television and those people that are being that are lying to us and tell them to shut up. That's right. I remember one night yelling at CNN saying, I pray you trip over your tongue. All of a sudden, the guy says, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God it worked. You yeah. know, it takes us by surprise when it works. It's amazing how when we pray and the prayer's answered, we act like we're in shock. <laughs> right. It's true. true. Yeah. You know, I'm in shock. It worked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're facing a new world. And we're not going to face the new world order. Amen. We are facing heaven's order in the earth. Glory. We are being released from the heavens above to the earth below. Ooh, the spirit of the Lord is upon us and has anointed us to preach good news. That's right. And the good news is we win. Amen. We win. Yes. yes. We are winners. We are not losers. Yes. Right. Amen. Somebody yes. say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. Yes. Because I am ready to see God move. I am ready for God to open up the heavens. I am ready for God to say, This is my way. Walk in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The heavens are already open. Yes. Ooh. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs>
that your desire to be overcome by his presence? That's my desire today. Yeah. And before we go, I just want to say a prayer for you all. Father God, I come before you with a heart that loves these people so much. And I ask you, Father God, to give them strength where they feel weak. For let the weak say, I am strong. Where there has been financial difficulty, let the poor say, I am sick. And where there's been sickness, let the sick say, I am healed. And where people have felt like victims, let the victims say, I am victorious. I am victorious. And where we feel that we have fallen down, I pray, Lord, the top of the mountain pulls us right back up. Mm-hmm. Lord God, I ask you to touch Shannon over there in Korea. And keep her safe. Mm-hmm. I ask you to touch Mike and Mary Jo and bring healing to their son. I ask you to touch Robert and keep him protected. I ask you to touch Debbie and keep her protected and healthy. I ask you to touch Yada Beth as she prepares to give birth to that beautiful baby boy. And I pray, Lord, that you touch Patty and the Colonel in the name of Jesus and bless them with health. I pray you touch Levon in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, you touch Carol in the name of Jesus. I pray you touch each other in the name of Jesus. I pray that you touch everyone in our church. I pray you touch Janice. I pray that you touch every person in our church in the name of Jesus and bring them health. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, for the victory. And I say to all of you, walk with the King and be a blessing. Bye bye now. Love, Love you. God bless you. Love you. Bye. 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 bye.